and we are live. Today we're going to talk about the Decent Milk Jug. Now, I'm the person who designed and iterated it, so I'm probably going to do most of the talking today. First thing I want to talk about our Decent Milk Jug is precision milk. First thing I want to talk about with the Milk Jug is these precision measurement lines that go all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top. And the reason I put those in is I was really struggling when I was making various latte and flat white and other drinks with how much foam I needed. And when I finally nailed it, I realized there was a ratio between how much milk I put in and how much foam there was afterwards. So I might start with, for example, 180 milliliters uh, when I started not foaming. And then when it was finished foaming, it was 50% more at 250. And I liked that. And by having measurement lines in, I made sure that every time I foamed, I did it right, or if I did it wrong, I could eyeball it and see that. And it's there for both right-handed and left-handed people, so you can get it from this side or this side, and you can still see the measurement lines here. Okay. The, um, okay. um, the lines are at very precise increments because it turns out when the lines are at precise there's a lot of markings on the lines because the ratio of dilution turns out to be quite important. When you're making a latte, for example, I make a morning latte for my partner, I do 36 grams out of espresso and she likes exactly 160 grams of milk. If I give her 150, she says, ooh, this tastes off. If I give her 170 mils, she goes, ooh, it's a bit milky. And then it's just right at 160. I know that sounds absurd, but uh, coffee and, and caffeine in particular, you know, they're toxins and we're very, very sensitive to the concentration of it. That's right. And so the exact dilution, just like cocktails, is pretty important. Do you have any comments about that? Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with the volume as it expands. And I like to think of it kind of like as if you, if you want a bit thicker foam, I want to see at least 50% increase. Um, if I want a latte, maybe 25% increase, and um, if I'm really doing sort of delicate latte art, uh, maybe even a little bit less than that. So it really does uh, matter how, what sort of drink you're making to how much you, you need to expand. But with the lines inside, um, you can actually really accurately do it and, and don't have to use a scale to sort of weigh. Um, you can just look off the lines and, and, and know you're in the ballpark straight away. So I think especially when you're just starting out, um, it's, it's pretty important to measure things, otherwise you aren't repeatable. Now, if you are running a cafe, there's another reason to do this. Um, I remember talking to Scott Rayo, and once at his cafe, just to see how much milk wastage there was, he set up a bucket, and all the baristas with the waste milk they had were supposed to dump it in the bucket. And what he found was 20% of the milk they were buying was being thrown down the sink. And since he was buying expensive organic milk, that was expensive. Yes. Yeah. And even if you're at home, it's kind of painful to, to waste that much nice milk. So putting just the right amount in, I think, makes a big difference. There is one other reason, which is with latte art, is that as you're pouring, thicker foam will tend to be on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so if, for example, you're pouring a, um, a 200 ml latte, but you've got 250 mils of foam, it's going to be too thin when you reach the bottom. And, and that won't be quite right. And obviously it's really bad if you're just exactly what you need and you're like sort of scraping the bottom because kind of this beer foam comes out <laughs> at the very end. And, and uh, you don't really want that unless you're making like an Italian cappuccino and you just want to blob. So I think that's another reason. Yeah, um, I like to play a little game with myself because yeah. obviously latte art is, is I mean, you, can you see stretch enough air in there and, and, and microphone to be just enough? Mm -hmm. And because I'm, I'm sort of reducing the amount of air I'm, I'm letting in, I'm always playing chicken with can I pull it through and, and have enough foam to mm. place my art? Um, and you know, the, the, just kind of working on that kind of makes you more accurate in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and definitely with the lines, you can achieve that a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I noticed is that if you heat your milk beyond 70 Celsius, you've ruined the drink. First of all, the milk is gonna taste cooked, but also if you pour that hot milk on the espresso, I don't really know why, it just ruins the flavor permanently. So too hot milk, on there, even when it's really cool, it's going to taste bitter later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, when you start reaching over 70 degrees, you basically start to reduce the sugars, mm. um, and, and that's why your overall beverage at the end is not as sweet and is generally a little bit more bitter. Right. Uh, and has that sort of uh, hot milk, uh, cold milk on a warm day sort of thing, when you, after an hour you got that aftertaste, it kind of has that little bit of that taste in there. So. Okay. Yeah, uh, try to keep it under 70 and you should be all right. So there is a solution to this, and, um, and the solution is to use a thermometer. But you'll see there's a clip on this thermometer, and everyone hates these clips because you put the thermometer on, and then as you're pouring, it flops like that, and maybe even pulls, falls out. Also, it's in the way, and it doesn't even stay in place. So. Everyone hates these clips. Uh, this is our milk thermometer, and we do ship it with a clip because that's what people expect, but you don't need to use the clip if you have a decent milk jug because about three months of figuring out the exact size of a hole here meant that you can just put the thermometer straight in, and I'll show you what that looks like. Is you just slide it in like that and give it a tap, and it's completely locked in, and it doesn't fall out, and then to take it out, you just give it a twist and it pulls out. I'll do that again. So slide in, tap, totally locked. Okay. I don't know why no one's actually copied this. It's, it's a pretty obvious idea. Everyone hates the clip. But uh, it's really a key feature of this milk jug that it makes it really easy. Now, one other aspect of using this little hole is that the milk thermometer is out of the way. Right? So as I'm steaming here, it, it isn't in my face. Whereas when I use a clip, it's here. It's completely in the way and I, I can't steam as easily. So uh, that clip is just a wonderful thing. And I'll show you, this is the 600 mil jug. This is the 350 and they both work the same way. It locks like so, pours, comes out. Um, I wish every cafe did this. Back to milk temperature. So I did make these walls quite thin, and that was on purpose. The reason they're thin is that the majority of people, they heat the milk and they know when to stop, basically by counting down from when it starts to hurt their hand. I, I know that sounds ridiculous, but that actually is what cafes do. <laughs> they put their hand like this on the bottom, and it turns out that around 50 Celsius is the threshold of pain, at which point it starts to hurt. And you want your milk typically between 55 and 65 Celsius. So do that and then count down three seconds if you want 55, count down 10 seconds if you want 65, sort of. But A, it's painful, and B, uh, especially if you're a cafe, this hand starts to become numb and the temperature starts to creep up. Or, again, if you're a cafe, you're in a rush, it's the morning rush, you just stop early and then you start serving your customers cool drinks okay there's one other thing about uh, using a milk thermometer that's super important and that's that if you are pouring drinks into ceramic it's going to cool about about 10 centigrade as soon as you pour it in if you're pouring your drinks into paper it cools about two centigrade just to say almost not at all that's super important if you're a cafe and you're doing takeaway drinks you should be stopping your steaming 10 centigrade earlier if you're not, you're, you're giving people too hot drinks. Another reason that's important, besides the fact that people are getting too hot drinks, is that milk tastes better the, the, the less it's heated. And the current trend in uh, cafes, especially third wave quality places, is to bring milk temperatures down to 50, even 55 Celsius in that range, and never above 55 is that the milk has a much fresher, buttery flavor from yeah. that. And it seems to have a little bit more texture mm. as well. Uh, I'm not sure if the heat is causing the bubbles to last a little bit longer or staying a bit more robust, uh, but I definitely do notice a difference when it's a little bit lower. And I find it pairs a little bit better with lighter roast coffees because mm -hmm. all ultimately it will be a little bit sweeter. Mm. So It's true that um, especially the lighter roast people are, are really into keeping that temperature down. Yeah. But we're talking about they have two or three seconds between 55 and 60, 65 Celsius. Yeah. If you can do that consistently without a digital thermometer, uh, you're amazing. The <laughs> rest of us, you should get a thermometer and so you don't curse everything, use one of these little holes. Uh, I'm gonna walk over to the other stand and just show you how this works.
So here I've got a milk jug and I'm gonna slide in that, I tap it and it's locked in. And then to remove it, I just give it a little twist and pull it out. Let me do that again for you. I, I put the thermometer in, give it a tap and it's locked in, it's not going anywhere. Take it out like that. Probably talk about this quite unusual. Go again. Okay. Next. Oh, next. Okay. Next, we should probably talk about this quite unusual spout, which is pointed. And the reason this spout is pointed is that when I designed this milk jug, I asked a friend of mine in America to get me as many competition latte artists as I could, and I got 22 competition latte artists. And I asked them what did they want in a spout and they all said loudly we just want a straight angle and I know this is super weird and super unusual but the reason is is that the vast majority of milk jugs have this kind of sloping uh, thing like this and those are fantastic for beginner to intermediate because basically the water that basically the milk just kind of gushes out comes out easily spreads out and you get this huge rosetta or heart pattern kind of without any effort However, once you advance beyond that kind of basic pattern and you want to do more detailed lines, let's say swans, like a swan neck is quite fine. Now you've got a problem with that sort of thing. And the reason this is a triangular shape is that as you angle this, it literally increases the flow. So you can essentially treat it as a thin, um, so you can treat it as a thick and then thin paintbrush as you back up and then thick again like that and it gives you really fine grain control, but it is more work, it, it takes more skill. And people who don't like this, it's generally because they haven't stuck with it, and, and you have to learn. And I know when I was a beginner, I, we used to sell that sort of big spout, and, and I liked the bigger spout one. And then I think about three, four months after I got into it, I realized I was only using this because I like the finer control and I didn't need that crutch anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's, it's great for framing with the rolled lips, mm. and um, you know, you can get beautiful balance sort of hearts and, and rosettas, uh, but once you've mastered that stage and you really want to start to work on other things, you will find that that rolled lip won't give you the flexibility in terms of the pace of the milk that is going mm. in. And um, if you practice latte art long enough, you'll kind of know it's all about the pace, position, and pour. And if you don't have control over the pour, then you are limited to what you can achieve with that, that actual jug. Um, so with this jug, it gives you the opportunity to practice pace and pour, um, but also to have the ability to achieve those more complex uh, latte art. Mm -hmm. um, but if you did you know, stick with it, you will find that your milk pouring skills will be a lot more accelerated in terms of pace of learning than compared to a rolled lip. So um, some people try it and they don't like it and you know they kind of miss out a little bit, but I understand it if they like to use what they're used to using mm -hmm. and that's fine. Um, but if you do feel like you, you're up for the next challenge, you want to push your latte art, I would suggest getting a, a, a more precision uh, lip like the one we sell. So Paul has already made an espresso and he's going to pour a uh, latte art now with our 350 milk jug. And um, afterwards he's going to pour it, he's going to pour it, sorry, with the 350 <laughs> milk jug, which is the one that's in his hand. And yep. then afterwards we're going to make a latte with the 600 ml jug and we're going to explain when you might want to use one or the other. So how much milk have you put in here in terms of milk um, lines? I pretty much put in the uh, almost the bare minimum without adjusting the flow. Mm -hmm. So you can get away with a little bit less than this, let's say about 50, maybe 60 less, more, uh, milliliters less than this. Okay. So what is your milliliters now? Currently we are about 150, maybe yeah. 160. It looks like you've got what I would call an eight ounce latte, which is six ounces of milk. Yes, again, that's correct. Which is typically about 150 in, and then after foaming it's at 200. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly purge the steam wand. Um. So 
just about getting my foam stretched. It, the milk has got warm now. So now I am folding my milk in to make sure. So Paul, I'm gonna stop you and have you do it again. Yep, sure. Because you've done the pro thing and you're going for the scalding your hand technique. Oh, so as I must use the thermometer. <laughs> uh, autopilot here, okay. So down the drain that goes. Okay. Ah. And this is why we call this a live taping and not a live event. Okay. So put the thermometer in first. That's sure right. Tap it, it on. And make sure it's on. Yeah, that's a thermometer without batteries. Oh. So let's get a thermometer with batteries. So this is, yeah, it'll be that one over there. All right, all our thermometers have no batteries. <laughs> You're in quick tap mode on the espresso machine, by the way. Hang on, I've got it. Okay. I've got one here. Look, we have one around here already. Okay, so roughly the same amount of milk again. My milk's about 14 degrees. And we shall start again. What temperature are you aiming for here? Um, <laughs> I think I will be around 60. Usually I'm around 60. Um, if I'm usually hotter than 60, less so less, uh, uh, below that temperature. Okay, so the milk has gotten warm now, so I'm now texturizing my milk. Because um, I didn't set the temperature on there, it hasn't beeped. Mm -hmm. um, and it is at 63. So I don't so, know if you saw me there, I was like, I was automatic mode and I was like, I automatically touch on and off um, to basically see. To, to lower the pain. Yes, to lower the pain. And so you're going to be over here. Mm -hmm. So the shot was pulled a little bit, so the crema has died a little bit. And here is the finished milk. I'm gonna leave the uh, thermometer in there so you can move see. The, the espresso. Um, right. So you can see um, what it's like to pour. But the milk is really chrome-like and is is quite well texturized. So we're gonna start now. Go that way. Okay. So the crema has died on here, so I do need to pour this a little bit slower. Um, but the milk is good. Okay. All in through here now. And I was almost at that stage where I was basically almost running out of foam. So I actually, if you notice on the camera now, I've not gone up to the vermiscus of the cup, mm. which is uh, a, kind of a, like a big no-no in the, in the cafe industry because you're, you're really bothered about volume. Um, but had I, um, if you see that when I poured the actual plot for the heart, it was immediately submerging under because basically I was running out of foam. So I pulled it straight away in order to save the latte art. Um, but overall, I think uh, the texture was quite good. And if you can kind of see in the, in the top now, the milk is a lot more grayer, which tells me I've used a lot of the good milk. But had I stretched it a little bit more, a lot of that would have been poured in there. And I probably would have had maybe three quarters of an ounce at most. Um, and yeah, so next time I probably would steam a little bit less milk and perhaps put the flow rate down a little bit so I can still control it. Um, but overall, um, this jug does really produce a, a lovely milk and is able to pour latte art. So what I notice what I notice with your latte art is lots of very fine lines. Yes, you can see these yeah. aren't big spreads, these are like really fine onion yeah. lines. And that's kind of typical of this jug, is very fine detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next I'm gonna have Paul pull an espresso and then use the second milk jug. And this has actually caused a different kind of latte art. And the reason is, is that the angle here has to be greater with the large jug to get things out because the jug is bigger. And that's gonna cause a wider paintbrush. So that's one of the things that we see with people who are doing latte art is they have both art jugs. And depending on what kind of thing they're gonna pour, they use the smaller 
350 jug or the larger 600 jug. Once again, the 350 is for fine lines, like we've just seen, and the 600 jug, same amount of milk. The 350 mil jug is for fine detail, and you use the 600 mil jug when you want a wider brush. Okay, I'll leave you to it. Okay. Actually, I think um, practicing on coffee without crema is actually sometimes quite good for practice. Um, because it teaches you to pour a little bit slower um, rather than at full pace and you kind of learn a little bit more control that way um, and it's also good for practicing um, how blending your crema will be um, as one of the first foundations of latte art is creating a good base which basically means can you blend your crema into one one color um, I've got the cup here okay great. So we're just using the default profile here. Um, we're probably going to cut all this, so don't worry about it. Yep. Or 60? Yeah. Yeah, okay, you've 65. Oh, okay. That's fine. And I'm not going to talk much other than you can just go ahead and steam. You're going to switch to the top camera now and watch it steam with the 600 jug. Okay. 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 No, I don't need that in camera yet, so you can go ahead and steam. Move your head slightly back. You're good. Okay. That's great. Sound here anyway, so okay. I'll uh, just set you up. Okay, okay. you're good. So, around about here. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Move your head back if you can. Yep. Okay, perfect. All right. We're going for a wide thing if you can. Okay. I was kind of trying to change my mind as soon as you said it, and I was like... <laughs> um, no, we're good. I'm just going to do this. Okay. Would have been nice if that was a clip cup, actually. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Okay. I think that looks nice. All right, did we get any questions? Covered everything I want to cover, so okay. Um, uh, switch back to this camera. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> thanks for watching all about the decent milk jug. Not move forward. Thanks for learning. Thanks for watching this video all about the decent milk jug. And if you give it a try, I would love to see in the comments below what you think of it, and if you think there's anything we can do to improve it. Thanks very much. <laughs>